In this video trailer, we're going to look at volume duration orders. What are they and how do I affect us as the average retail trader? Stay tuned. Hey guys, so I want to talk about today in this video about volume duration orders. Now, for most of us, we don't have access to this order type. This is kind of for institutional grade platforms, prop platforms, the platforms that use it, proprietary trading firms, hedge funds, etc. Yes, you probably can get access to a retail trader if you're funded well enough and you've got an account with a broker that allows access to the platform. It's not like there's a barrier to entry as such, but for most of us, we are kind of trading via a spread bet, via a CFD, via a spot broker etc. So what I want to do in this video is kind of walk, talk through the volume duration order but also the most important thing is how does that affect us when we're thinking about who's on the other side of our trade and why the market's moving the way they do. Okay so a volume duration order that's going to vary obviously from platform to flat platform but effectively what it's doing is it's saying okay let's take a chunk of volume which we call duration and over that duration, slice up the order that we have into chunks at various intervals so that we're not impacting the price too much. So in other words, you don't want to go in and just smack your order straight in because you might impact the price. You don't want to be sitting there trading it, working the order manually because there's a lot of legwork involved in that. If you can use an algo that does this and splits the order up over a set period of volume as opposed to time, then you can have a little impact, a small impact on the market. If any, you're kind of trying to go unnoticed and you can execute large orders. Well, this kind of thing, if you can imagine a massive amount of people doing this over a longer, over the period of the day, this is why we get trending environments and trending movements rather than spiking environments, spiking movements. Because if everybody is allocating buy orders after a percentage of volumes or after a certain amount of contracts are done, you can imagine that it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So 10 contracts are done, someone puts in one, someone puts another one in after 10. All of a sudden, this is what's causing the buying, the buying, the buying, the supply demand balance is shifting. But let's go to look at an example. So let's say we've got a duration of 100. And these are gonna be lots or contracts, guys, just for clarity here and ease of example. So we've got duration, sorry, of 1,000. So that basically means we are looking to execute this trade over a period of a thousand contracts traded. Going to depend on the instrument they're looking at, going to depend on many variables what they have, it might be 10,000, might be 100, size of the order, etc. But for this example, the duration, which is when we're trying to execute the order, is over a thousand traded. Now the interval is how often they execute the trade, the algo executes the trade. So in other words, it will execute a batch, it won't execute another batch until at least 100 contracts or lots have been traded. So if it's 50, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. When 100 are done, then it will execute a batch. We'll talk about what it'll execute in a second, all the way up to 1,000. So let's move to variance in a, in a moment. So gold quantity is 150. So for this example, we wanted to buy 150 contracts of whatever this may be. And the disclose is how much it will show to the market at any one time, whether it's taking offers, whether it's working bids, whatever. So in, the, in a reality, this is what's gonna happen. We go through the market trades a little bit. It trades 100 contracts in total, whether that's over a few seconds or over a few minutes. And then this algo will put in 15 contracts at the market, let's assume it does the market for now and trade 15 contracts. Then it will wait and it will see another 100 done, they'll trade another 15 contracts. Then it'll wait for another 100 contracts, they'll trade 15. If someone comes in and does 100 in a second, it will still put 15 in. If someone takes, if it takes you know, five minutes to trade 100, then it'll wait five minutes. So it's, make, it's trading as a percentage of the actual volume coming in to try and hide what it's doing. You know, because if you think about some of the time slice orders, they go in firing off every minute, for example, and there's still some of those out there as well. But they can become obvious and they can't adapt to volume. Whereas this, for example, if you imagine that your duration was much longer, then the execution uh, frequency is gonna be much lower over something like lunchtime where the volume dies off, and it's gonna speed up again into the close, which is why we see that kind of smile shape for volume across the intraday chart because the volume starts to pick up. As volume starts to pick up, these guys start to get more active and also there'll be constraints on day as well when they have to get more active and also relative to price. But just keeping it in line with this one for now, it's volume duration order. You can see how now, why when we have trending environments, when we have things happening, that this is when uh, the impact is, is more severe 
because we have traders out there who, or algos out there who are executing regardless. And if they're buying, you know, they're doing 15% of the buying over that duration. And you imagine a lot of people doing that all of a sudden, that's when you get the imbalance. And by the way, the variance is just to try and stop predatory algos finding them and front running them. Because if you think about an algo, and I've done a video on this quite a while ago actually now, it's uh, called a predatory algos. What are predatory algos? There are algos out there who will try to sniff out, for want of a better word, these type of algos, knowing that they're doing a certain amount of volume and then front run those algos, making these guys pay up, making some money off them. So you can have little things like this variance percentage where you can dial the percentage of the order up and down. So if you're doing 15 maximum, maybe it will vary it between you know, 12 and 15, 10 and 15, to try to look as if it's just a normal person trading rather than an algo trading, rather than this 15, 15, 15, 15 all the time. There's normally other parameters as well that if there's any left at the end, either put it all in to be filled or leave it remaining. Uh, and there's, there's other little bits of pieces as well, but you get the idea. The point is it's sliced up into a percentage of the volume that's come through the order book. All right, guys, that is volume duration orders. What are they and how do they affect your typical retail trader? Keep your risk managed. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.